Hi, this is Nathan Wynn from AA Nomadic LLC. This video will be on Dial of Box and pop up. Before we get started, please remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's free to you and it helps encourage me and motivate me to keep on making videos for you. If this video is helpful to you, please do not hesitate to hit that like button. Now let's get going with dialog and pop-ups. As you know, Power Apps doesn't have a native dialog the same way that Excel with Message Center. So everything here is custom made. I have three examples for the dialog. The first one is info. You see the background is gray out, only the dialog in focus with information icon and some text. This is a warning and error. For pop-ups, it is larger than the dialog. You have pop-up one, full screen, pop-up two, scrollable. The background remain gray out and pop-up three. I hid away the pop-up buttons so that we can focus on the dialog. There are two parts to the dialog, the so dialog group which contain these three buttons that you see here, and then a container that has everything else. We focus on the button first. I insert a dialog info, which I name, and then I copy to warning and error. The only thing I change is really just the feel of it. In the height, I reference the dialog info height. In the width, I reference the dialog info width. That way, if I need to change the size of the button, I simply change at one at the source here, and everything else which is reset. For me, 175 and 75 looks good, so I change it back. We won't focus on the on select just yet. In case you're not familiar with the grouping, let me show you. Let me ungroup. I simply select multiple controls that I would like to group together by holding down the shift key. I right click, I group. I always name my group. Group, the leading GR, show dialog. For the container and all the controls inside, first let me turn on the visible to true because we're now looking at this variable here. You find three icons, some are hidden at the moment, a close button, a dialog text, the header, and then the shape that outlines the dialog. For the container here, I size it so that I can other control except for the header and the footer. I choose a darker fill and I set the transparency to about 75. That way, it gives the depth perception and all the control appears to be gray out and the focus should be the dialog for the user to address. So for the shape, I would like it to be in the middle of the container. So I set the Y to the parent height, 633. That's the container height. Minus cell height of 275 and then divide by 2. You have the value of 179. That's from the top of the container down to here and the bottom of the shape to the bottom of the container. I do the same thing for the X cone. Parent width, 1366 minus width, 500 divided by 2 get you 433. That's from the far left to the safe left. And from the safe right, go all the way to the application. 433 times 2 plus 500 equals 1366. For the header, because my shape has borders, the width of the header has to be smaller so it fit right inside and not overlapping with the border. Therefore, you see here, it will be the shape of the dialog and then minus 4. As for the X and the Y, it will be the dialog X or Y plus 2. For the icon, they all have a 50 width and height. The X is right in the middle. It's a calculated field, the way that I have this shape in the middle. And then for the Y, I to take the header and then add 5 to it. To achieve it, you take the header Y, which is all the way on top, add the header height here, and then add 5. I get that. Let me show you. Page 3, 3 icon. Set the visible to true. You will find them all here. Shape and color coded to ensure that similar icon click on icon, choose anything first, and then use this icon drop down. You can search for your perfect icon. The icon visibility are false by default, unless the value of bar dialog type is specified. The X and the Y are all in the same spot. It's only visible when the condition is true. So let's take a look at the mechanic of pulling up the dialog box. So in the container, I set the visibility to this variable var so dialog and it's false at the moment. If I click on this button, you have the header information, the information icon, some text to inform user, and close. So look at the on select of the dialog info. I set the so dialog to true. I set the dialog header to information. I saw the dialog text to here is some text to inform user. And lastly, the dialog type info. Okay. The dialog header is information, and I just simply uppercase. I put some place holding in case there's no values. So when I test or in design, I know that there will be some text there. 
for the icon because I set the var dialog info, therefore the info icon is visible. And here is some text from the dialog text. Lastly, if we click on this close button, it just turns the visibility of the dialog to false. Same thing here. If I click the dialog error button, you see that the dialog header is now error. The error message, the error icon, and I do the same. So in theory, it's quite simple. It's just you need to do it once and then it gets easy. For pop-up, it's quite similar to the dialog. I have three buttons here, which I group, a container, C pop-up, and some control. If I hold out the autumn key and I click, pop-up one appears. The container itself is same size and in exact spot that I use for the dialog, which take up the entire screen, other than the header and the footer. The background is dark gray with 75% transparency. The header is centered within the container with this formula here. Parent here is reference the container itself and it receives text from variable var pop-up header. At the bottom, I have the close button and that just simply set this whole pop-up variable to false hiding the container. For the content pop-up, I use the scroll. If you're not familiar with the scroll, you go in search, new screen, scrollable, and in here, just grab the canvas. You can resize it and enter control X and bring it to whatever screen you want. And in here, you can insert as many data card as you need to, and it continues to scroll. I don't need another scroll, therefore I remove it. Here's my canvas, the height is 450, the X coordinate matching the title, and the width is matching the pop-up header. The pop-up header is using the variable pop-up header, and it is pop-up number one at the moment, as see here. For the container, the visibility is on this var, so pop-up. Let's examine the buttons by calling the pop-up. On this button one, I set the sole pop-up to true, set the header, and specify the var pop-up name. You see here, the var pop-up name change as well as the header for each of the button. And the pop-up name is a critical piece for the application to determine which data card will show. So for pop-up name equal pop-up one, then the data card number one here is visible. Subsequently, if the pop-up name is pop-up two, then only data card number two specified here is visible. Let's take a look. Pop-up one, pop-up two, pop-up three. I hope you find this video helpful. I hope you can use the concept and incorporate either the dialogue or the pop-up into your application. Thank you for sitting through this video with me, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye-bye now.